Hello, everybody, and welcome to another hobby cheating video. And today we're going to talk about making your true metallic metals pop like non metallic metal. So let's talk about paints. We're going to do this fast because I'm narrating over the top rather than making you watch the whole thing. We're going to try this style. So I've got my Vallejo metal color, and for my shade color, I'm using Vallejo Game Ink. And for my pop color, we're going to use plasma fluid. If you don't have Badger Minotaur plasma fluid, you can always use. Uh, like a Gielman blue or something like that. So when we're looking at true metallic metal, one of the advantages is obviously it uses metal pigment. And so we can see here how the light is catching on the top and the bottom is being cast in this deep shadow of this little hooked blade of my Zangor. Um, and that's nice that it does that. But of course, we've got a scale problem. If this weapon were sized up to reality, it'd be so much bigger and it would reflect so much of the light that there would be much there'd be different hot spots there'd be areas that were cast more in shadow etc and that's what we're going to recreate and we're going to do that by having this range of steel as you can see i've got three here steel dark aluminum and silver so i started out with just a base coat of steel you always want to start with something closer toward the darker end of the spectrum when you're doing metals as opposed to a straight mid-tone like you would do with normal non-metallic paints so I get all my colors out of my palette, and we're going to start by sketching in our darkest shadows. So I'm going to take some of that Vallejo game ink and get it ready, get it out there. And all we're going to do is just push it up toward that top corner there. Um, so we're going to shade the part that would be cast the most in shadow that would be receiving the least light from the zenithal. Okay, that's our goal. So you can see I'm just going to push a little bit of that black ink right up there into the corner. Then I'm going to avoid the brush by cleaning it off real quick and just spread out some of that paint. Just a little, little spit blending there. And I'm going to repeat down on the lower part, again, catching that shadow that would be both cast in shadow by the blade part above it, and also because the, the areas that, on that kind of an angle that are up closer to the light, are more in shadow. And then I void it and we smooth it out. Now right away you can see the difference, because we've started to already control the light. Now I'm going to take my midtone. I start just below the middle point. And I sketch it in. Boom. Instantly. Better reflections. Because now we've brought that up. Taking control of that light. We've got a much brighter tone there. Then I go to my silver. And I the very brightest bright metal. And I'm just going to put the teeniest, tiniest little hot spot on there. To really catch that light and make it reflect like white. Okay? And right there you can see we've already turned this blade way around. Like we're much better controlling the overall way that it's reflecting with the light and it's much more visually interesting instead of being flat because we're trying to recreate that scale now i'm going to take my plasma fluid and i'm going to go ahead and go over the middle section only in between my mid-tone and my shade always pulling the brush toward the shadow so i never push the paint toward the highlight i always pull it toward the shadow and the reason i'm doing that is twofold and using blue one, seal tends to actually be rather blue because it's reflecting blue light around it. Two, if it's a very reflective metal, it's reflecting the sky above it outside. So I'm just, I thinned out a little bit of that plasma fluid and I'm doing some very light filters over the middle area. This also serves to smooth out our transitions. Now the Vallejo metal color blends like a dream because it's got a longer working time and it's the best metal paint around, but this keeps everything nice and smooth. Kind of can help with a little bit of that transitions. So now I'm going to repeat the same thing on the underside of the blade. And just like with non-metallic metal, I want to be doing the same thing, opposing my light with my dark. So I start again with my black ink, and you'll see how if it's very bright on the top of the blade, then the bottom of the blade is going to be the most cast in shadow, because that's what would happen, right? I mean, you look at that underside I'm, I'm hitting with the ink right now it's pointing directly toward the ground, whereas what's above it is pointing directly toward the sky. So I want the bright contrasted by the dark, right? Then I just do the same thing, grab my mid-tone metal, sketch in that highlight, grab my bright silver, sketch in that highlight, okay? And it's just that, again, really quick, tiny, light brush strokes, creating those hot, hot spots. Now, with the bottom part of the blade and the mid-tone, you've got a choice like for your, for your filter color, because it's pointing toward the ground. So if you're going for blue steel, that's fine. You can just put a quick filter of blue on it and call it a day. Your other choice is you could go to something else, say like a Seraphim Sepia. 
and you could choose to go for like a sky earth non-metallic metal where I get some brown and I'm just going to water it down and then in a very controlled fashion, lightly hit that middle tone with that sepia. Now, a couple things happen there. One, it's much more matte, so it's going to be a much more, uh, it's going to knock the shine out of the steel, which can be appropriate for the stuff pointing away from the metal, or sorry, away from the sun, away from the light source. Um, but two, it can give you a really interesting color sort of selection where you've got this sort of orangey brown contrasted by this very light blue, <coughs> creating a nice color transition. So, um, the point is, is that with pop colors, you can do a lot of different things. Um, and they can create interesting contrast. Now, our final step, if you remember back last week with our, uh, with our non-metallic metal sword, one of the final things we did is we edge highlighted it. And we did that with white. Well, here we're going to do the same thing with our brightest silver. We're going to get some of that on our, on our brush and extremely light, and we're going to wipe most of it away. And that is the key. You get the metal paint on your brush, your brightest, brightest silver. And then in a very, very light, light touch, like look how many times I'm hitting the edge of that thing to get the paint on there. 10, 20 times. Very quick, light, 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 light touches. And I'm going to sketch the edge in the middle of the blade and on all the actual outer rims. And what that does, look how much that catches and creates a dividing line between those two. And look how much more visually interesting that blade is now as I move it around and it plays with the light as to where it was before. We've really turned this from being a fairly flat, boring piece of metal that doesn't look like actual metal into something that's doing something really visually interesting. You can choose to build in the blue or the browns as much as you want, push the contrast as much as you want. The real keys are control your shadows, make sure the shadows oppose the light so you have your darkest darks opposing your lightest lights. Your pop color goes on last. It's a filter that's just there to sort of filter the light that's coming through. Right. And uh, as you can see, it's a quick process. That's what I love about this. Like this, I'm doing this. This is a fast speed playback, but this was only about I'm only doing this two times speed. So there you go. I hope you found something here you enjoyed. I hope you liked it. As always, comment below. Let me know what you want to see in future hobby cheating videos. Give it a like, subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.